Hello, you're very welcome. It is Stephen Max Classic Movie Podcast. We're on to episode two. We managed to make it past episode one. Yay, big round of applause. Pat on the back for me. Okay, so we're going to delve right into number two on my list. And we're staying within the horror genre for this one because this is, without a doubt, one of the greatest horror movies ever ever done. It doesn't need blood. It doesn't need guts or chainsaws or anything else. It simply needs sterling performances from three brilliant actors. We are talking about 1980s all-time great The Shining starring Jack Nicholson, Shelley, uh, Shelley Duvall, the wonderful Shelley Duvall and um, Jake Lloyd as well who plays little Danny Torrance and gives us, or Danny Lloyd rather who plays little Danny Torrance one uh, like just a stunning, stunning piece of acting from such a, a young child. So, let's delve into the meat and bone of it. First off, directed by Stanley Kubrick from the novel by Stephen King. Uh, there are so many stories behind this uh, movie and story, so many stories about the making of this particular movie, especially when Kubrick was trying to decide what his next feature was going to be. His secretary does remember at the time she was in the production office, she could hear books banging off the wall as Kubrick was kind of reading a couple of pages and saying, not, not going to do that one. And then all of a sudden, there was silence. And it transpired that uh, Kubrick had found Stephen King's novel, The Shining, and decided that that was going to be his next movie. So we've got three protagonists in this particular movie. It's really, really interesting. We've got Jack Nicholson, who plays Jack Torrance, uh, whom we learn is going to uh, take a job at the Overlook Hotel as a caretaker for the winter months when the hotel itself, which is based up in the Rockies in Colorado, is essentially cut off from civilization. He decides he's going to take a job as the caretaker and he will bring his wife, Wendy, and son Danny with him. Uh, now he wants to write a novel, so we find that this, to him, is the perfect opportunity to have a bit of peace and quiet. We look, we, we're given a kind of tour of the hotel as well, and it's cavernous insides, it's maze on the outside, and it looks absolutely huge. And you start to realise that we're going to have three people in this hotel with nobody else around them. The movie starts off pretty happy. We see the interview. We see the uh, Danny, who uh, is played by a young Danny Lloyd, who, you know, decides to discover the bowels of the hotel on his little tricycle. And this is where the first proper use of the Steadicam came into being with Kubrick, where we, we follow Danny from a kind of bird's eye, a third person point of view as he goes through the hotel on his little tricycle. And it's the use of sound editing during this particular part from hardwood to carpet and back to hardwood again, which is is very visceral to, to, the, uh, to, to the ear. It's wonderfully done and it, it, it's creepy even though it's not meant to be creepy it sounds creepy it just unsettles you slightly. As we delve into the movie even further, we find out a little bit of a history about the previous caretaker, uh, Mr. Grady, who was pay played by the wonderful British actor Philip Stone. And we find out that he actually went mad and killed his family, his uh, two twins and his wife, before killing himself. And we find out that he suffered from cabin fever. This is alluded to at the very start, and obviously it comes to the fore a little later on, as the hotel itself takes on a life of its own. And we find out that Jack is being consumed by the hotel. We we see the breakdown of the family unit. We see Jack's descent into total madness. And it's just, it's a simply wonderful piece of acting by Jack Nicholson and, of course, Wendy Torrance, uh, who uh, is played by Shelley Duvall. And we also see, uh, like, the stories behind this movie, the story about how um, Kubrick got the best out of both of these actors by reducing the rationings, uh, waking them up in the middle of the night. These are all the stories that surround this movie where they were tired, they were hungry. He instructed the cast and crew to kind of ignore and bully uh, Shelley Duvall, which obviously would not happen nowadays. But at the time, he managed to achieve what he wanted, Kubrick, which was, uh, you know, her just literally at the end of her tether. She was tired. She was hungry. She wanted this experience to be over. But... We, what we see on screen is probably one of the best adaptations of a Stephen King book ever and also uh, one of the best acting performances by the wonderful Shelley Duvall. As the story goes on further, I'm not going to spoil anything for you right now in case you haven't seen it, but you will see as Jack's descent into, into madness becomes more apparent, especially with this scene on the staircase where we suddenly realise all is not well. What should be done with him? I don't know. I don't think that's true. 
I think you have some very definite ideas about what should be done with Danny, and I'd like to know what they are. Uh, uh, well, I, I think maybe he should be taken to a doctor. You think maybe he should be taken to a doctor? <laughs> when do you think maybe he should be taken to a doctor? As soon as possible. As soon as possible. <laughs> Jack! You believe his health might be at stake? Yes! You are concerned about him? Uh, yes! Uh, And are you concerned about me? Of course I am! Of course you are! Have you ever thought about my responsibilities? Jack, what are you talking about? Have you ever had a single moment's thought about my responsibilities? Have you ever thought for a single solitary moment about my responsibilities to my employers? Has it ever occurred to you that I have agreed to look after the Overlook Hotel until May the 1st? Does it matter to you at all that the owners have placed their complete confidence and trust in me and that I have signed a letter of agreement, a contract, in which I have accepted that responsibility? You have the slightest idea what a moral and ethical principle is, do you? Simply wonderful acting from Jack Nicholson and Shelley Duvall. And that is the point. That's the turning point in the movie where we realise something has gone terribly, terribly wrong with Jack. Wendy realises it too and realises that he is no longer her husband. He has been taken over by the hotel. And we've also got the mystery of room 237 and those twins which scare the living pants off you every time you see them as they're dotted around the movie and a wonderful scene as well with an elevator full of blood but overall the movie itself is a, a, an utter treat if you want to be scared and it's a psychological horror it's not full of blood and guts and chainsaws and guns and everything else it's psychological it's a slow burner you become enveloped within the Overlook Hotel you become I- invested in, in in Wendy's plight as she watches her husband go from a pretty normal human being to just an utter madman we watch as the Overlook overtakes the family and we realise that they're cut off from the outside world they have no one to turn to but themselves Themselves. And it's a wonderful piece of visceral filmmaking by Stanley Kubrick with one of the most iconic movie lines of all time. Here's Johnny. <laughs> yes, here's Johnny. Everybody knows the Here's Johnny line and not an awful lot of people know, well not an awful lot of people know, but a lot of people don't know where that line actually comes from. And it's obviously, it's a take on the whole Johnny Carson thing, the American chat show host, whenever he would come on stage it would be Here's Johnny and Jack Nicholson does it to perfection. It's a wonderful piece of filmmaking by one of the greatest directors of all time. And the thing about Stanley Kubrick himself is that he managed to make almost a a masterpiece for every major genre out there from military with Full Metal Jacket to Sci-Fi with 2001 A Space Odyssey don't forget the period piece Barry Lyndon which I would heartily recommend you watching and also A Clockwork Orange which is a dystopian nightmare as well which all of those movies we will be covering later on in Steve, Stephen Mack's classy, classic movie podcast but what I would advise you to do is mark The Shining on your list don't watch it alone whatever you do if you've never seen it before because it does creep up on you and before you know it you're breathing just as heavy and you're feeling just like Wendy is when she realises she has nowhere to go with her husband turned into a madman at the house. Her son, Danny, is in danger and we've got the mysterious woman and the mysterious entity in 237. And as for the ending and the final frame... Well, that's really up to viewer interpretation. Uh, I would recommend watching Room 237, which is a companion movie piece for this actual movie. It's pretty stunning. It delves further into the mysteries of the number 237, the movie, and of course that final shot, which it's puzzling in one sense. It's really up to to the viewer how they want to relate to it. 
but I'm not going to ruin anything, although I'm trying to keep my mouth shut right here. I'm not going to ruin anything for you. But do, if you haven't seen The Shining, we're coming up, we're, you know, into the final few weeks before Halloween comes around the corner. Put it on your list. Watch it. Enjoy it. But don't watch it alone. That's The Shining 1980. That's episode two of my podcast. Don't forget, please do subscribe and share and tell your friends and we'll get as many subscribers. And I will take suggestions as well with regards to what movies you'd like me to cover. Coming up in episode three of Stephen Mack's Classic Movie Podcast podcast. We're going to be looking at the fractured American society and a wonderful movie uh, by Tony Kay, which uh, wasn't, uh, it was full of trouble, basically. And we're talking about American History X starring Edward Norton and Edward Furlong. It's a wonderful piece of filmmaking. Pretty kind of, you know, it is relevant with what's going on in the United States nowadays, but there's an awful lot of trouble behind that particular movie, especially with Edward Norton. So we'll tell you all about that in Stephen Mack's classic movie podcast, episode number three. But from episode number two, thank you very much again for listening. Make sure to can put The Shining at the top of your list. Put that on your list as movies to watch. Don't watch it alone and make sure, please do subscribe and tell your friends. For me, Stephen McDermott, enjoy your movies.